right. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that everybody is having a fine Sunday today. Um, I was chatting over there in the comment section asking um, if there were any types of insects that you guys were interested in sketching today a little bit before class. Um, I didn't get any responses, so you guys left me um, to pick for myself, and I uh, choose tiger beetles. I was looking at um, I was looking at a family of flies, the scaphophagids, because um, we actually haven't sketched a fly yet um, in Sunday classes. So I thought that I could do a fly, but flies are also my least favorite order. So instead of putting you guys through that, I figured we'd do something that's fun and bright and colorful. And there are all different types of designs to these guys. All right. So um, we're looking at a tiger beetle. Tiger beetles are in the family Carabidae. So they used to be in their own family um, all by themselves, the Cisindelindae. But um, they, they did genetic testing and they came back and realized that tiger beetles were actually just a subfamily or another type of ground beetles. All right, so here's a handful of ground beetles in the tray with them, right? So there's a variety of different body shapes and body forms of ground beetles, but the tiger beetles are all in one subfamily called the Cisindelini. Um And I'll go ahead. <clears throat> I'm not typing. I'm not typing these guys out, so I can go ahead and write that out for you. Uh, the Cisindelini. That's their subfamily. All right, and that is going to be all of the tiger beetles. Now, something really cool about tiger beetles, before we start working with them, we're about to see a variety of tiger beetles. I'm just going to put them all under the microscope so you can see all their really cool bright colors. Um, but tiger beetles, you'll notice, are also very leggy. They have very, very long legs, and that's because they are also incredibly fast. All right, um... Tiger beetles are probably the fastest running insect. I think I would have to look that up to confirm, but I believe that they are the fastest insect because they actually have the ability to run so fast that their mind can't, that their eyes can't see while they're running. It's like they go into light speed. So they're running so fast that their brain cannot comprehend what their eyes are seeing. Um, which is really cool. And so they have the ability to just go shh, and then they stop and they look around to see where they are. Um, that also makes them really great predators because they have this ability to um, chase down their food and catch it. Um, they also do have wings and the ability to fly. So sometimes their running is like run and then fly and then, you know, catch the food or, or land and then or land and run they are actually pretty tricky to catch um all right so i'm gonna turn this camera off and we're gonna go ahead and look at the variety of tiger beetles under the microscope um we're gonna be picking one of these guys and if Nobody has any strong opinions about which tiger beetle we're going to be sketching. I have in the back of my head which one I think we should do. All right, so that's the one that we were seeing originally. But tiger beetles, let's just scroll through these a little bit, have a variety of different colors. And even that one that looked a little gold or a little brown kind of zoomed out. When we zoom in, we're going to see that she just, yes just is so vibrant, has so many colors. Um, so even the ones that kind of look darker, they only look darker because they have even more colors um, uh, reflecting off. So let's see. This guy is pretty cool. Um, we can zoom in on him a little bit too. He's got very, yes, look at it. So this exoskeleton reminds me of like, um, highlighter on black paper or like a, or, or a sharp, bright marker or like a bright gel pen on black, par black paper. 
because you've got that dark undertones, but all of those, you can see the reds, the yellows, the greens, the blues, and these tiger, look, it's almost the whole rainbow on his leg. Um, these tiger beetles will never fade. This is color that is structural color, so it's never ever gonna fade. They get to keep it for the entirety of the life of the specimen. Zoom out. Come on, microscope, you got this. All right, this is the one I think that we're gonna sketch unless you have um, a favorite that's not this one. Um, I think, I, I really like the design on its elytra, the design on its back, and all of the legs are kind of out and about, so we'll be able to see all of the different parts of the legs, so I think that that's good about this specimen. But also, just look at it. It's the beautiful green and blue. Um, this one was collected in New Mexico. Oh, look at that was one of my Angel Peak specimens from last uh, from last year. This guy came to my black light at night. So a lot of times when you're finding um, a lot of times when you are finding tiger beetles, you're gonna have to be collecting during the daytime. There are a handful though, like this guy that come at night. And you know what? I have an even better background. It's not that one. It's this one. This is the environment that I caught that tiger beetle in. This is a picture of Angel Peak, New Mexico. Um, and that was the view off of the canyon when I caught it. So I think that that is a much more appropriate background for today. All right. Um, the other really interesting thing is they, I had that guy that was this blue, those blue and green colors. But then there is this one right here that's this red and yellow colors. Um, and I'm honestly not sure if they are the same species or not. Um, I was talking to I was talking to a tiger beetle guy, and he said that it's possible that they are male and female, um, that they are male and female, and that they are just sexually dimorphic. That um, one is the darker blue color and one is the red color. Um, he also said to look for combs on the front legs, which I think is the character of the male. I'm not seeing any strong combs on this guy. All right. And then we've got two more specimens down here at the very end that we could sketch. These are um, a little bit darker magenta red colors. Let's see if we zoom in on this little guy, if he's got some prettier undertones. Yeah, so there's some striping on the elytra of this guy. I say guy, but I'm not sure if it's male or female. Beautiful. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys the variety of tiger beetles that are in my collection before we pick one and go ahead and sketch. I'm thinking that we're going to do that blue-green one because it has very striking colors, so you can definitely see the differentiation between the body parts. Um, and I've got the perfect background for it. So we're going to go ahead and do that guy. Got to move, got to move the scaphophagid out of the way. He was also one I was considering, so let's see. We're going to do this one. <clears throat> oh, I'm so excited. <clears throat> so my microscope um, camera freezes every time this camera turns on. So I've been able to work that to my advantage. So I have the ability to show both the microscope camera that's close up and I can go ahead and put this specimen on another sh little sponge, put him over here on my paper. So you can see a little bit of his uh, um, overall body shape and we can leave the body shape of the specimen up in our camera too. 
Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and... I can probably, I can measure our specimen from the head to the tail on our microscope. I believe that that was, yeah, that was zoomed out all the way. So our specimen from the head to the end of the abdomen is about 1.23 centimeters. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that over here in the corner for myself, 1.23 centimeters. All right, and then um, if we are labeling our guy, I do not have this identified to species, all right? Nope. I don't have this one identified to species, but we do know that it is a tiger beetle, right? So that it's going to be in the subfamily Cisindelini. So we can go ahead and write that. Um, so up here we've got tiger beetle. Oops. Broke my pencil. We've got tiger beetles, and then um, let me go ahead and make sure that my camera doesn't autofocus and drive us up a wall. All right, so we're drawing this tiger beetle. Our tiger beetle is in the subfamily Cisindelini. And that's as far as we know. So we can write that. It's C-I, C-I, Sindelini. Um, N-D-E-L-I-N-A-E. Sindelini. All right. I also wrote that in the, um, in the live chat, just in case you'd like to, just in case you can't read my writing. Alrighty. Now, with the overall shape of our specimen, um, tiger beetles are going to have pretty awesome large uh, compound eyes that kind of bulge out a little bit. I'm going to make sure that my specimen's body stays pretty small because it's. I know it has very long legs, and I'm going to try and get the legs um, in proportionate with its body, right? So we've got a fairly large head, and what I'm doing um, fairly large eyes. What I'm doing here is I'm giving myself a very light outline just to see the overall shape of the specimen. Um, before I go in and start sketching all of the details, just so that I know um, that it's going to fit on the paper. So uh, a flattened kind of oval for its head, a rectangle that's going to be um, thinner, right? And then our elytra, or these, uh, these wings, are going to have shoulders and come out a little bit and then round out. So that looks like it's going to be about the right size for my beetle and hopefully we'll have enough space around to get its legs taken care of. All right, I'm going to be able to zoom in. I could look at tiger beetles all day long. So you can see up here at the top where I mentioned his eyes kind of look like they're bulging. Um, you can kind of see up here where there's this ledge and there's this ledge. So the eyes protrude a little bit away from the head. Um, this right here, this segment is going to be its pronotum, the first segment of the thorax and where its first pair of legs are connected. Um, if you've been around for some of the other beetle, hemipterin, beetle, true bug, or fly talks, we've mentioned the word scutellum. That's this little triangle guy right here. So um, I'm going to be able to go ahead and sketch some of these guys. 
we've got our head. I'm going to just come in here and um, I've got a basic shape of the head, but when I add the eyes, I'm going to bulge it out just a little bit past what I think. And that's going to give me eyes that look like they're only slightly disconnected from the head, and it's going to give me about the right size. So I've got my eye <clears throat> on the left, and then where it comes in, this you can see is almost like, is almost kidney shaped. It comes in a little bit on the edge. Um, and we're going to give it just a small ledge at this very tip right here from the left to the right. And then we're going to try and give, we're going to try and give the right eye about, we're going to make it look about the same as the left eye. Something something like that. Um, my right eye might be just a little bit smaller than the left. That might be a little better. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this line doesn't lag so much. <laughs> There's my eraser. Something like that. Oh no! Sorry guys. My camera disconnected. I'll be right back. Whee! Alright. <laughs> Welcome back. Um, I'm sorry I got all discombobulated. Okay, so we've got our eyes taken care of. The head does come down into a little bit of a neck, so we're going to go ahead and give it this little angle down here, um, almost starting to those the edge of that rectangle that we had, maybe even a little wider. My rectangle is pretty narrow. Um, and then we're going to cut that, the head off, right? So that's going to be the edge of the head. Now, there are things that I generally look for on the top of the head. I'm looking for things like ocelli, simple eyes. I'm looking for where the antenna are connected, and the antenna are connected way up here in the front. We actually don't have... Um, we actually don't have the ability to see the antennal connections unless we were to zoom, and um, unless we were to, I think, change the angle at which we were looking. We're definitely going to look at this guy head on afterwards because I, I want to show you his mouth parts. He's got some pretty awesome large jaw like mouth parts. All right. But I am going to go ahead and add the connections to the antenna. So I'm going to go ahead and add this first segment here and here just so that we can say, all right, this is where the antenna are going to be coming off. It helps us to remind us that not to forget them. Um... But I also know that antenna can be kind of long and complicated, so I like to leave them to the end, um, just in case they're going to be going over or under things like wings and legs, um, because then uh, the antenna are really easy to weave through things, but it's really difficult to build things around antenna once they're already there, right? So that's, uh, or at least that's my theory on it. <laughs> Okay, so we've got these very, very beautiful colors. Alrighty. We're going to scooch our specimen down a little bit so that we can check out the pronotum. All right, so this is gonna this central segment right here that looks like a rectangle. This is the pronotum. It's the first segment of the thorax. So it connects to the head with this convex line, and it's almost barrel shaped. Um, 
my specimen is becoming larger than my sketch. But that's okay. Hopefully it doesn't go off. Alright. Um, so, I recently told people I was going to do better about labeling. So this guy right here is the Pronotum. P-R-O-N-O-T-U-M. And then if you want to talk about, you can see that there are almost these two um, risen spaces on its pronotum. It's almost like there's two little mountain ranges in the exoskeleton. Um, you can see that kind of here and here. And then on either side of them, there are these series of hairs. Um, if you want to talk about what an individual insect hair is, there are many, there are different types of insect hairs, so sometimes they call them different things. But all insect hairs are called seedy. That's what an insect hair is called. S E T A E. Seedy. All right. And then, um, moving back from the pronotum, all right, so some of you guys know that I like to also sketch legs at the end. You can kind of see that I'm going to be labeling off to the left, and so I'll draw the legs off to the right. Um, you can kind of see where the leg might start, about here, but I'm just going to draw that really light, and I'm gonna, we're going to come back to those legs. Those legs are impressive. They are long and thin and have the ability to run over sandy environments. Okay, so we can see right here in, at the center line of our insect, at the center line of our beetle, we have this triangle right there. That is what we call a scutellum. S-C-U-T-E-L-L-U-M, scutellum. And then around it, um, you have the first two pairs of the insect's wings, of the beetle's wings. And the first two pairs of beetle wings are always called elytra. Now, there is a little bit of, um, of a... Uh, they don't come straight out, right? So you can see that it is... Almost looks like rubber banded shut a little bit right here. It comes out. <clears throat> and so we're going to make sure that we sketch something along those lines and trying to keep them even on both sides. And then giving yourself shoulders and working it down. And I'm going to go ahead and move our microscope so that we can see the rest of the elytra and all of the beautiful colorations. Oh, so I don't think I told you why. Um, I told you that the beetle has structural color, but I don't think that I ever explained what that was. So my, um, my tiger beetle is never ever going to fade because it has structural color, meaning that what's creating the color on the exoskeleton are actually what look like very small crystalline structures all over the exoskeleton. So it's the way that the light comes into the, um, into the prism, essentially, bounces around on the exoskeleton and reflects back to our eyes. That's what gives them their colors. Um, so there's no pigment involved at all. It's just uh, the structure of its exoskeleton makes it this color. Um, whereas things like dragonflies or praying mantids and cockroaches and grasshoppers especially, all of those things are pigmented insects, and so they will lose their color over time. Butterflies and moths are kind of a mixed bag. Some of them have structural colors and some of them have um, pigmented colors. Uh, a lot of times the way I think about it is that Structural colors tend to be metallic. Not always, but if you think about an insect and you think, wow, that's gorgeous, it's kind of shiny, or wow, it looks like it's made, um, it looks like it's glowing a little bit. A lot of times those are structural colors rather than pigmented colors. 
Um, you can go ahead and go from the end of this scutellum right here and create a vertical line all the way down to the furthest point on the abdomen. And that creates the divide of the elytra. E-L-Y-T-R-A. All right. Elytra is actually plural for both the left and the elite, left and the right elytra. So if you were going to do it singular, it's actually elytron, and it's O-N at the end. Like Tron. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and add the design for the, um, the, the design on its back. Now, the design is actually going to be one of the defining characteristics for, the speci for identification purposes. Um, they do look at other things like tibial spurs and um, the... I've never gone through a too much of a tiger beetle key. I know they use a lot of facial features and a lot of features on the legs. Um, but <clears throat> I still haven't ID'd this one to species yet, so that's something I'm working on. This little, um, this part right here almost reminds me of a wave. There is some minor, um, even within the same species, that not every one of them is exactly the same, but they will have very similar overall shapes. Like if this, if this species, this species will have, you know, three, they'll be all lines, for instance, rather than like some of these guys that we saw previously have dots, like they'll be the six spotted, um, there's the two lined. Um, so they have generally like the same patterning, but sometimes there are minor differences. Just like humans, right? We're all human, but we're all just a little different. So this, what looks like a foot right here that's kicking the edge of the elytra, this and that one are actually going to meet in the center. So when we are sketching our elytra, um, we know that right here, if there's a boot on this side, there's also going to be a boot on that side. And the design cult goes through. Um, it's just that this specimen opened its wings a little bit. And I guess I probably could have closed them during the pinning process. I gotta tell you, they're not the easiest to make sure that all of the legs are in the right place and the wings are in the right place because their legs are so leggy and their wings like to open. This almost reminds me of like a T-Rex foot. We're going to play Rorschach, Rorschach um, ink blots with our tiger beetle, tiger beetle designs. What do you see? All right, so I've got that left side all taken care of. I'm going to do the right side, too, because I think that it just is going to add to the sketch and also I don't want to open up the wing or anything so it just makes sense to get it on both sides I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do my best to get the the right side about the same as the left side which means um, the same distance from the edge And then coming down for this foot. There's even a little bit of differentiation between the left and the right side on the specimen which is interesting. Like, if you look at the details on the right side, it's going to be a little bit different than the details on the left. Um, these are some really awesome predators. They have the ability to catch super, super fast things, and sometimes when you see them in the wild, you'll see a bunch of them. Like, 
there'll be maybe a bunch of prey, like a bunch of beetles or something, at a gas station. And so you'll also see, like, um, tiger beetles that are skinning and skipping along the ground and um, catching themselves food. All right, so we've got the overall body shape. We can come back and sketch the legs and the antenna. Um, I think, let's see, I'm going to add... I'm going to add the where these wings, these legs should be coming out on the right side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the right side extended. Um, so I'm going to show the length of the legs on the right. And then on the left where I've got all of these labels, I'm just going to kind of tuck my legs into the specimen so that we can't really see um, kind, of like our, kind of like our specimen here. I'm just going to draw these and tuck them into the specimen. All right, let's zoom it in on this first pair of legs. I'm just looking at, I'm just checking. Um, sometimes it's easier for me to go to um, zoom up and down in the microscope while I'm just looking at it. So we can see right here, this is where our femur is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sketch the femur and the tibia, and then we can go and zoom in on the, the tarsal segments. Um, excuse me. Because there's no way to, um, because they're not in, they're, they're in different planes. The, um, the tarsal segments and the femur are in completely different rain, um, focuses, so it'll be easier just to do it this way. All right. Sometimes I just like to go in and darken some lines. So we've got this femur here, and this is the um, first segment of our leg that's coming out. It almost looks like it's a little expanded towards the base, so you can go ahead and just give it a little bit of an expansion. And then it comes up to this knee segment, and um, after the knee is going to be our tibia. And our tibia is going to come back in a little bit towards the specimen. Um, and it's going to be probably the same length, so we're going now what past what would have been that anten those antenna. So if we had sketched those antenna, we would be already be bumping into each other. All right, now we're going to go ahead and zoom in on these tarsal segments. Just want to make sure I'm right. Yes. So this right here is tarsal segment number one. Tell the specimen to stop moving. There we go. Sometimes there's a little bit of give in the sponge, so it takes a minute if I move, if I adjust the specimen, for it to kind of settle in its new spot and stop changing the focus. Making that come in just a little bit, because then I can push these tarsal segments out. So we have a total of one, two, three, four, five. Five, six. Five, five, five. 
One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's five. There's just a little hair that almost looked like it was a different segment. So it's one, two, three, four, five tarsal segments and the two claws. One, two, three, four, five, and two claws. All right, so you can see these legs already look very, very long. And if you think about what would be the best adaptation for running through a desert or running through a very sandy environment, you don't want to have a huge footprint because the more foot that you have touching the ground, the more, um, the more friction you're creating uh, as you're running. And these guys are trying to be very, very fast on ground that sediment that is literally blowing away underneath them. All right, and so they need very long tarsal claws. You'll see that those here. And they need very long, thin legs. All right, let's go check out the middle and the hind legs. Well, actually, yeah, let's go check out the middle and the hind legs. So you can see how long and leggy these, um, these guys are. The femur from the middle leg starts all the way up here, and then it comes through. This knee joint, that's where the tibia starts, and the tibia moves all the way to about here. And this is where the five tarsal segments start. So you've got one, two, three, four, five in there. One, two, three, four. Four, five. Oh, the tibia starts right here, one segment earlier. So um, you've got very, very long legs, and the hind legs are going to be the exact same way. So we're going to try and pick a focus that's about in the middle. All right, so we've got the first... The femur does expand just a little bit at the very base. It gives them some muscular strength, some strength here. Hmm. So we've got a femur, and then the tibia is very long. Let's see. The tibia is probably going to go until... Um, just before the end of your abdomen, the end of the elytra. Either way, they both end right here. And then you've got five tarsal segments, and those are actually fairly long segments on the middle and the hind legs. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and then two tarsal claws at the end of that fifth leg. And then we're going to do the hind leg. Now, Keep in mind that the hind leg is going to be on top of the middle leg. So wherever it crosses, um, just make sure that it's crossing over top. Yeah. So our femur is going to come out like this, and because it's crossing on top, we're going to erase any of the lines inside. And then you've got the tibia coming down. And on my hind leg, the tibia goes from about here to about here. <clears throat> and then the tarsal segments. See, there's a part of me that really wanted to cross over one more time, because normally they do. 
It's going to look a lot more natural if I cross the tibia over the tarsi of the middle leg. So instead of coming out and making it flat like that, I'm going to come out, bring that femur, and then I'm going to bring the tibia back over top of the middle leg. So you're going to probably cross that middle leg twice. That's more what it would look like. And then you've got five. One, two, three, four. Oh, they should be longer. One, two, three, four, five. Dorsal claws. All right, so we have front leg, middle leg, hind leg, that all we can see all of the segments. We can, um, in beetles, uh, a family, a, a characteristic to family is a lot of times the tarsal formula, and I've been trying to keep up with that with you guys. So our tarsal formula, T-A-R-S-A, the tarsal. Um, the tarsal formula for our cisindelins are five, five, five. So the way we calculate that is the first leg, the middle leg, and the hind leg, right? So in how many tarsal segments they have. So we've got five tarsal segments on every pair of legs. And if we were going to go ahead and tuck these legs in on the left-hand side, I'm not going to be able to tuck in my first pair of legs. So I'm going to sketch this really light. And it's just going to go through the word a little bit, and that'll be fine. Um, two, three, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five. So I just imagined sketching through and just drew underneath my word. so that I don't have any crossing lines. So I've got the first pair of legs, and then if I was doing the middle and the hind leg, I can tuck these in. So I can go ahead and draw a femur that comes out, but then the tibia just has to come back towards the body. And then the rest of the segments can be imagined underneath. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and do the femur. And the femur goes on top of the tibia, the hind leg goes on top of the middle leg again. So that erases that, and then our tibia is going to come back towards the body. Now, realistically, I think that it wouldn't tuck so far. It would probably, kind of like the first pair of legs, would have to show all of the segments. So I guess if we were doing it that way, we could really only tuck in the middle leg. I think my left front leg is just a little longer than my right one, but I think we're doing all right so far. Hi. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give my um, give my tiger beetle a pair of antenna. So right now I'm just trying to see approximately how many segments uh, I have on my antenna. Um, why did it stop? There it goes. So it looks like we've got one. Uh, this little one is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I was trying to see if there's one here. Maybe counting the left antenna is going to be a little easier. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe about 11. The ones at the end kind of get small. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give it about 11. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead for longer antenna that have a variety of antennal segment sizes. What I'll do is I'll sketch out the, um, the shape of my antenna first and then go back in and add the segments. So I'll start from the center of right here, um, the center of my first segment, and I'll draw a really um, light line, probably like this. It gives me an idea of about how long I want my antenna to be. And then I can go along that light line and sketch the segments. So I know that the second one's kind of small, but then afterwards they are kind of these longer straight segments. And then keep in mind, wherever the antenna crosses over a body part, the antenna is going to be on top. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Something like that. And then you can go and erase any set, any any of your center line that's really obvious, or if it went too far past. Um, these segments are fairly narrow, so that line wasn't as visible. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side, and it's going to get involved with the letters. We'll just, well, maybe we'll go out, just outside the letters. Maybe we'll do something like that and see what happens. So we've got the other small segment, and then we've got nine of the long rectangles. So, one... So that left hand side went a little longer than I expected, but it, you want it to be about the same size as the right, so I was just a little off. Now keep in mind which direction you're erasing. The antenna are on the top, so you're going to erase whatever's inside of that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Perfect. Look at that. Okay, cool. We have a really, really beautiful tiger beetle. I'm pretty proud of our tiger beetle today. Um, we've got a lot of stuff labeled on it. We've got those huge compound eyes, the long legs. Um, I do want to turn our beetle and look at it head on. So I'm going to sketch the head on view. I'm going to erase this 1.23 centimeters and put it out over here on the left. And I'm going to draw it right there. Oh, I smudged my... I smudged it. It's no good. Alrighty. I am looking for my little piece of styrofoam. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. <gasps> All right, give me two seconds. I just knocked a leg. Darn it. I'm gonna um, glue this this uh, this guy's leg back on really fast before I put him back under the microscope. I accidentally bumped him against the ground a little bit when I was turning him to see his face. And these legs are so thin, they break off so easy. You were such a pretty specimen. All right. 
right, I'm going to put my, this leg aside, and we're going to sketch the head, and then I will glue it back on. Because it looks like I'm going to have to actually set it up with its own little station. Maybe I'll do that under the microscope after we draw the head. Has anyone told our tiger beetle recently that it's beautiful? It needs to hear it more frequently. Look at that. Hmm. All right, time to sketch it. I love the what looks like leopard print in its eyes, and I wonder if there is um, a reason for that, or if it's just the way that the light is hitting it. Um, I'm not sure. I do know that um, some insects, like dragonflies, they will have, um, their lenses are not all the same. Some of, yeah. Um, the lenses aren't all the same. Sometimes they'll have um, eyes that are foresighted. Sometimes they'll have eyes that are nearsighted. So they'll have like different focuses on their individual lenses um, so that they can all mash it together. Yeah, look at those eyes. All right. Um, so we've got a head to sketch. He almost looks like an alien. He has that very wide head on the top, and then it comes down to those very narrow but powerful predatory jaws. Powerful predatory. How awesome is that? Um, and his... And he's got this little wave right here. And it looks also like there might be... <laughs> it also looks like they might have a... Um, have a suture here. So this might be the separation between its uh, head and its mouth parts, or this would be its upper lip or its labrum. That's what it appears like to me. All right, let's see. These eyes, they do have a little bit of shape to them, so you can go ahead and they almost remind me, when you draw them upside down like this, they almost remind me of like half of a yin-yang. With a very small point up there at the top as it's um, focusing around the head. So going ahead and making sure you got those eyes that kind of round around the head. And then our, our, we can actually see where the antenna connect into the head. So the antenna are connecting right here underneath the eyes. I'm going to make sure that our head is just a little bit wider. It looks like I made him too thin because I need to give him the segments where his eyes connect, but a lot of, or where his antenna connect. But a lot of times I'll only draw the one segment when I'm drawing a close up of the head just to say, all right, that's where they connect, but. Um, that's not what this sketch is about, right? It's not about the antenna. We're looking at the face. All right. Got that. And then after our labrum, obviously we've got those epic looking mandibles. They are, have two spines on each side. I'm going to draw the left one first because it's the one underneath. And we know that it looks the same as the one as the right one that's on the top. So you can kind of copy that shape um, along with imagining what it looks like, something like that. And maybe the second one's even a little longer.
and then we're gonna sketch the right one on top of it so we're gonna lose a lot of those lines that we were trying to fix anyway which is all right because we don't need them um and then we're gonna give it both spines on this side one two all right so we can go ahead and erase anything from the left one that's underneath making sure that you've got both of those spines visible from the other side. <clears throat> and there's a part of me that really, really wants to zoom in further on the eyes. Um, oh, here's something. You see right here, that little segment that's in the back and those two segments that are there, those are not legs. Those yellow parts, those are actually mouth fingers. Those are palpy. So you can go ahead and sketch those. Maybe we'll change the focus so that we can see those a little better. Do the mandibles move in one direction? Yes. The mandibles move this way. All right, so our, our palpi are here, and this one is three segmented, and these look two segmented. So we've got these on the outside and these on the underside, and those are the palpi that help push things towards his mouth, like this. So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the two segmented ones, two. Alrighty, which are mostly underneath, so you can't see a lot of them. I think we should zoom in on the eyes. so beautiful. I don't know why they have that really, really pretty coloring. I want to know. Awesome. All right, so that is our tiger beetle. I'm about to flip it over and glue its leg back on. So, um... Why does the beetle have eyes like that? Well, that's a very good question. I'm not sure. It has the beautiful comp it has these really pretty compound eyes that have almost patterning on them, and I don't know what the patterning is for. I do know that these beetles have the ability to run so fast that their eyes cannot their eyes and their brain can't comprehend the world around them while they are running kind of like a space movie where they go into hyperdrive. They just run so fast that everything is a blur and they have to stop and look around to be able to, to give their bearings right, you know, so that they know where they are and what they're doing and what they're next to. Um, their antenna are very, very helpful in this process. So if they're running very, very fast and they can't see, their antenna can still feel at that speed and they can stop very, very quickly. So um, they don't run into things very frequently because their antenna tell them to stop and they can put on their brakes really fast. Um, but uh, there were some science experiments as to like what would happen if they are they didn't have antenna and so there were some scientists that that nipped off some tiger beetle antenna and ran experiments and they definitely ran into things so they if they if they lose their antenna in a fight they will end up running into things that's something we learned through science all right to glue this leg back on I'm going to take my label off of my specimen and hopefully not lose it. 
I'm going to turn this specimen upside down. It was the hind leg that was sticking out a little bit. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, why normally we tuck legs. Because when, when legs are sticking out, they're more likely to get bumped. You're welcome. All right, one of the characteristics of all co-rabbids or all ground beetles are these uh, expanded coxae. So right here, you can see that it looks like there's this almost dark purple bulb. Um, trochanter. Trochanter? I believe it's coxie. Yeah. Um, so right about there, you have this expanded coxie, and that's where the femur connects into. Um, and all ground beetles will have that characteristic. So that is a distinctive characteristic to family. If you flip over a beetle and you see this, what almost looks like a whole nother segment that's all based in muscle, that's when you know you have a ground beetle. Now, tiger beetles always have this... Um, you saw a variety of tiger beetles today. They all have that the same type of shape where um, they've got this narrow pronotum and large eyes, and they're generally gorgeous. All right? They are generally very, very brightly colored. Okay. Got to get some stuff out of the way. I wasn't planning on using my, actually using the microscope there. So my goal is to glue the hind leg back on right there, right above that. Um, my goal is to glue the hind leg back on right about here. Now, when I am doing it, I believe that it might be just a little bit of out of focus for you because my eyeball and the camera's eyeball are, are at different focuses. And so it's more important for me to see what I'm doing, I think, at least this time, guys. So I use Elmer's school glue, and I know there's a variety of people who have all different types of methods on gluing um, specimens back together. You can also use tacky glue. Um, a lot of times what I will do is take just a little itty bitty bit, and I'm using a little mounting pin, right? So a very, very small pin. And I wait for the Elmer's glue, I put it on the edge of the, I, I kind of put it on the edge of this cone, and then I wait for it to get a little tacky, start to dry. And then once it's tacky, then it will, um, the, the insect leg will stick to it. So now I have a little bit of glue on my pin and on my insect's leg. Got to figure out a way to get in there really quick. You can see that there is a little bit of glue. The, there's a little bit of a glob of glue, and I don't really like globs too much. So I'm going to try and get it kind of evened out a little bit before it sets too much. And then make sure that it's about even with the other legs. I'm actually happy with that. All right, so the tarsal segments are all locked together, so they're going to be holding, um, so it's gonna be holding those legs up. And I'm gonna have to leave that specimen like that overnight. 
So I will be putting my microscope cover on so that the cats don't mess with them. All right. I love it. You know, sometimes, and hopefully I remember to put its label back on. I'm going to sticky tack it right there up in front. Awesome. Yes, I agree. The colors on tiger beetles are absolutely amazing. Very, very much so. All right. I think, ladies and gentlemen, that, um, I think that's what I've got for you today. We could talk a little bit about the immature life stage of the tiger beetle. Um, but I'm going to go camping tonight. So I think that I'm going to say bye. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to say, oh, hey, this right here, this environment, um, this background that I have on this slide, it is a salt flat in Arizona. And there are tiger beetles that live here in this environment that don't live anywhere else on the planet. All right. Um, so this is a really cool place. I got to go here with a tiger beetle expert and, um, I got to be here with a tiger beetle expert. And so that was a really, really cool experience. And we taught, we caught a variety of different tiger beetles and he was able to identify them to species for us right there on the spot. Um, and I don't know, I had a great time. So that's this environment. <laughs> um, Please, uh, I've got, I do lots of things, guys. And so, Out School is a place where I teach kids. Um, if you, if you know a young child between the ages of 5 and 8, or 9 to 12, or know a teenager who wants to learn how to create YouTube videos, um, you can drop by Out School, and, um, there's a description down below. Um, there's a link in the description and you can go and check out my classes and sign kids up for individual classes. The cool thing is that they get to meet people from around the world who also love bugs. So we are working on creating all types of friendships and learning about bugs in the process. It's a great time. Now, um, you can feel free to subscribe to my channel. This is my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you want to be notified when I'm going live, you can go ahead and click the bell, right? Um, I do, I am at Insectopia2015 on Instagram. You can always check, check it out. I take fun microscope images and I post them on the interwebs. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if tomorrow we'll have a Guess That Bug because I'm going camping. So I try to do it Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but every now and again I miss a day. So it's a surprise. <laughs> and then um, this is the QR code for um, if you would like to donate to my channel and me and Insectopia and my adventures with teaching people and the world about bugs. Um, if you enjoyed hanging out with me today, you enjoyed what you learned, um, had fun sketching with me, uh, feel free to drop me a, um, a small token of appreciation or buy me a coffee, whichever works best. Um, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, awesome. And I'm glad you had a good time today. So I look forward to, oh, someone asked me if, if I was doing it next week because it's Easter. You are right. I'm probably taking Easter day off. So we're going to, um, we're going to skip next next Sunday, and then we will be back in two Sundays. You might get a surprise class next Sunday, depending on, depending on what I'm doing. I haven't solidified my Easter plans yet. Um, I'm probably not going to be here, but, you know, it's a possibility, I guess. We'll have to see. All right, so thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. And get outside and go find some cool bugs. They are out there. And I've already added some specimens to my collection this summer. Or this, uh, yeah, spring. So um, have fun bugging. Bye.